Blue Beetle has a very strange marketing strategy. Really wish that we could get it to you guys, but we need to stand on the right side of history. By making not promoting the movie a moral good, I can only assume that also includes not supporting the movie by going to see it. Really wish that we could get it to you guys, but if you can't be bothered to get off your ass and talk about a movie, then it's definitely not going to be worth my time to go and see it in the first place. I do wonder when Hollywood will realize that they should stop hiring people who would willingly tank their entire industry. <laughs> We are union through and through. Because this movie is not shaping up to do very well, and it doesn't really have any excuses. You could say DC's been going through a tough time, it's had lots of changes going through it, but the director's come out and gone, no, none of that happened to us. Nobody fiddled with our film, this is exactly the movie we wanted to make. They wanted to make a movie that wasn't even worth promoting, I mean, it's an interesting tactic, I'll give them that. To stand on the right side of history. They can't even be bothered to remove Batgirl logos of a cancelled movie from their film. <laughs> and maybe that's why the projections have been shockingly low for this movie. With them originally coming in between 12 to 17 million at the domestic box office, although that number has gone up recently with Deadline, who are now saying, oh, it's definitely going to fly towards 30 million dollars, and that is amazing because it's right in the vicinity of another Hispanic slash Latino tentpole movie, and you've been seeing that a lot. From the discussion to the reviews, very little seems to be about actually the movie itself and the quality of it. No, instead it's just, this is Latino. Now over in England, that phrase didn't really mean much to me, and the more I looked into it, the less sense it made. It was basically like talking about, this is great for a European movie. It's like, yeah, you've just made a collectivized name for a continent. <laughs> Inside that area, you've got lots of different nations with their own very different cultures and people, but then along comes Hollywood and just goes, they're all the same. The Latino representation is awesome. How? Try saying that I represent all of Europe and then ask someone from Germany what they think about it. And this movie desperately needs some kind of positive promotion because none of the actors can be bothered to do it. And that gets doubly stupid when you realize that not only does it have really low projections, but the guy thinks he can play Blue Beetle for another 12 years. You can't even be bothered to do interviews about the first one. Why would they ever work with you again? Why would anybody work with you again? The only thing Hollywood should be doing is making a blacklist of every single person who won't market a film they've presumably already been paid for. You finished scraping the gum off that lounger or what? <sighs> well, let's say you care more about the movie than the actors, so are actually going to go and support it. What are the reasons why you might want to see the movie? Well, it's got absolutely nothing to do with any other movies in the universe. <laughs> I think we were smart right off the bat to make a standalone movie. You want to make a standalone movie with a character that nobody's ever heard about and then just bang on about his geographic location as if that's the only reason to go and see it. Smart really isn't the word I'd use, but let's see. Of course, conversations happen because of the way cultures are shifting in terms of superheroes. Everybody needs to belong to a clique. What? Does the director think that if you're not part of something like the Avengers, then you can't make a good superhero movie. But in this, we don't just talk about the superhero, no, we take our time and introduce him to every single family member, so that when he gets the scarab, you can see where the family is involved, and where every family member has a heroic arc. You know when Tony Stark was captured and kept in that cave, building his first Iron Man suit, the only thing that was going through my head was, what's his mom doing right now? Can someone interview his third cousin second removed on his daughter's side? I'd love to know. What's that? She's making a TikTok video about how she won't cook for her husband. This is gonna have me on the edge of my seat. What happens in Blue Beetle? Well, he returns home, doesn't know his purpose in the world, and then unexpectedly finds himself in the possession of an ancient relic of ancient technology. As you do. This is like in Miss Marvel, where she gets her superpowers was delivered through the mail. <laughs> Yeah, this wasn't radiation getting bitten by a spider. This was UPS, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you knew it was powerful when DPD made you sign for it. The scarab suddenly chooses Jamie to be its host, and he gains extraordinary and unpredictable powers. It's an interesting word, unpredictable. If you've got unpredictable powers that you can't rely on, it does mean you shouldn't do something stupid like they've shown in the trailers. <laughs> Great first introduction to the character there, isn't it? Trying to top himself by jumping off a building. Even get him to ask someone, you had this random theory that you had absolutely no evidence for? Are you sure it's true? He goes, no. I was like, well, here we go then. And after having this theory, he then just decides to lob himself off a roof while the guy whose theory it is is telling him not to do it because he doesn't think it'll work. That's not a hero. 
that's an idiot. That's why when I hear that the director thinks that we're going to have a lot more Blue Beetle in the future because the story is expanding, my only response is, do we have to? This is a guy who thinks destroying his own movie is on the right side of history. And yet you want this guy to be DCU's Nick Fury. Old, useless, and so lazy, he actually almost causes the apocalypse. Actually, when you put it like that, it does seem pretty accurate. Although even Nick Fury never said the destruction of his entire franchise is on the right side of history. And that's why it's so weird when he says things like, well, I want 12 more years of this character, before following it up with the future of the character is up to the audience. I mean, it's largely an audience that will have no idea your movie even exists, because you're not even getting off your arse to promote it. So I'm not sure how much of this is actually their fault, but we'll see. Blue Beetle deserves his own city. It helped uh, bring the story from an American story to a worldwide picture. That's not how that works, love. We moved the story from an American city to a South American city. That makes it worldwide. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That makes it one narrow geographic region on the planet. Doesn't make it any more applicable to me than an American story would. This is why movies are meant to be about values, fundamental moral systems. They're not supposed to be about your geographic location, because then they only apply to people in that geographic location. This is why nobody makes a movie about slough. I think the kitchen was not a big kitchen, but there's a lot that happens inside the house. If that doesn't get you to want to go to the cinema, I don't know what does. They've got a kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. It gets better. <laughs> all the trapes, all the chairs, all the keychains, but it's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. This movie doesn't just have a kitchen, but that kitchen actually looks like a real life kitchen. Even the chairs look like actual chairs. This is Hollywood magic, ladies and gentlemen. Can you understand why a lot of it seems to be really scraping the bottom of the barrel of things to say about the movie? But then again, at least they never mentioned Batman. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. Now they do try and play down the Batman line under the guise of, well, this movie has homages to many different things. His suit creates what he thinks about, and so whatever a teenage kid would be into, that's what he's gonna make. Which is presumably why he's trying to make Batman gadgets, or other parts of the movie. The Big Belly Burger, you know, people that know movies know the homage of that. But when they get asked about the Batman line specifically, what it means and what their favorite reactions were, things get a little bit interesting. They go, George Lopez called Batman a fascist. I'm like, hey, no, 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 Uncle Rudy called Batman a fascist. <laughs> so are you saying it's wrong? Are you saying you disagree with it? And if it's obviously wrong, why is it in the movie? I mean, yes, you can have an idiot that thinks something wrong in a movie, but when that idea is the prevailing opinion of the ideology that backs up all of Hollywood, what is the audience supposed to think? I like Batman. Dude, you're supposed to be an actor. I would have expected you to make that a little bit more believable. But, you know, it just, when the trailer came out, it just, it just trended everywhere. I wonder why there would be a fan response to Hollywood once again destroying their male heroes that the audience actually likes, especially when it's DC, and it's one of your biggest heroes that everybody likes. We've just spent many years watching Marvel destroy everything that made them famous and just replacing them with characters that everybody despises. Trended everywhere, and it was, I think it was a great way to kind of plant our flag that this movie's gonna be a little bit different. Yeah, this is gonna be different than all those other movies which have insulted what their fans liked and lost money. No, this one, this this one's not gonna be exactly the same as that, we promise. It's Latino, you see, that'll, that'll save it for some reason that we haven't worked out yet. Based in a different part of America, the world will care about that. You know, without having to shove it in your face or be like, this is how the Latino life is like. It and now it seems like DC is trying to do the same thing again. Where you come out with a movie that you want to lead the DCU for the next 12 years. You want the main character to be DCU's Nick Fury. And you think it's strange that people may have an innate revulsion to you denigrating the heroes of the past simply so that you can come along and replace them with the one that makes you money. Let alone doing it with terminology that you clearly don't understand. Batman's a fascist. There is one thing they say though that I would love to know who they're thinking of. On YouTube, people just scream out loud. We all know our favorite reaction. <laughs> I'd love to know who it was and whether they were somebody who didn't actually say any commentary and instead were just staring at the screen, slack-jawed, trying to dislocate their mouth like a snake. It's like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. Just seems hilarious. Because it might be that they're referring to this with Ryan Kennel when they said I need more lines like that from the movie if they're freaking out like this. And the director himself came out and said, well, my job's done. Laughing emojis. I've pissed off my audience. That's what a director should do. Wait, no, why are my projections 12 to 17 million? Or even when the revised upwards still come in as low. I can't work it out. Maybe I should stop kicking my audience in the face. No, maybe we should try some of our other marketing strategies. Quick, tell them how many post credit scenes there are. You know, all those scenes at the end of the movies, past all the credits when everyone's left the cinema. The scenes 
scenes that were so awful they got cut from the actual movie. It just got added on at the end in a desperate hope to make people stay long enough to watch your name scroll by on a screen to boost your own ego. You really know how to make those crowd pleasers in Hollywood, don't you? And there is the other issue with post credit scenes, which are generally designed to set up future movies. Your timeline's already a mess, mate. Are you sure you want to fiddle about with that? Especially when you've already said, I think we were smart right off the bat into making this a standalone movie. Quick, add in those post credit scenes to add in more movies at the end of it. But this is a superhero movie. When has anyone cared about making it fit into a universe? I mean, at the moment, Gal Gadot doesn't even seem sure about her own superhero career, let alone how she fits into the greater DC universe. She's screaming, I've got another movie, and DC are going, no, you don't. <laughs> That's a timeline mess on its own. Even when he's asked about how- even when he's asked about the continuity of his movie and how it fits into the DCU, the answer is awful. Well, I think that's the beauty of it, right? I think it's pretty vague. How is that the beauty of it? I'm so lazy I just didn't say anything and that'll probably fit. We know The Flash exists, Superman exists, and I think it opens up doors of any interpretation or direction James Gunn's want to go in. Here's an idea. Why didn't you speak to him about it? Why didn't you find out the direction he wanted to go in and then make your film fit? Why have we just got all these random movies that have nothing to do with each other sitting next to each other and we just go well nothing really happens in them so they don't contradict yet. It's like every Disney Plus TV series. You reach the end of the series and you're just back where you started. A good story that does not make. And then we reach the full-on marketing. If the actors can't talk about it, well, we've gotten first impressions and reviews. We've also got commentary from race-based advocacy groups. Why? <laughs> Is there a European advocacy group? I'd love to know. If I go to America, do I get an entire institution to advocate for me? If so, I'm gonna move. It's important that we show up for them at a time when they are not able to promote their own project. Why? If they can't be bothered to promote their own projects, why should we show up and support them? They're not even willing to support themselves. If you can't be bothered to pull your finger out and do a bit of work, I don't know why I should be giving you any money for it. While we're encouraged by some of the changes we've seen in recent years, we continue to deal with the repercussions of years of being actively erased. I'm sorry. I never heard about that on the news. What has Hollywood been doing to you? This is horrific. This is worse than what Mulan was thanking in the credits. You're accusing them of actively doing it themselves. And we've been invisible on screen. Screen. What do you mean, like transparent? Have you evolved the ability to bend light around yourself or something? <laughs> we haven't as yet developed the technology to encode one into ones and zeros on digital film. But no, The Blue Beetle is a long overdue cultural moment. This isn't just any old movie, largely because it's not entertaining. No, this is a cultural landmark moment. I mean, yes, one of the first things we get him to do is cut a bus in half. Designed to protect its host. Designed to you. I, I think I cut a bus in half. Inevitably would have slaughtered a load of innocent people in his first move as a superhero. Anybody standing up on that bus had to be taken to hospital in a bucket. Sometimes it does what you want and sometimes it doesn't. Maybe it's the Blue Beetle popcorn bucket. We'll have to wait and see. And it's such a large cultural moment that Zack Snyder himself came up and started begging people to go and see it. We've got to show up for this one, folks. It's predicted to make $12 million. It's a cultural moment. If you don't see this one, you'll have to tune in for the next one that'll just be basically the same thing. Except that might come from a different region of Earth and that will be even more powerful. We're gonna set it in Birmingham. Hollywood has been severely lacking in brummy representation. You haven't lived until someone puts on a suit and says, it's day from Birmingham. It will transcend your consciousness to another plane of existence. Following that, we're gonna get the Scousers on board. Maybe a few people to say, why I man, it's Biker Grove. <laughs> All the Americans have no idea what I'm talking about, which is why making a film regional as its only source of entertainment is a stupid idea. And yet that's all we get. I'm an American! I'm an American! It's a love letter to the multiple ways of being- Yes, of course there's multiple ways, because you're trying to cram multiple countries with their own cultures into one phrase. The only reply to this movie should just be, we are not a monolith. Especially when the director keeps coming down with a severe case of foot in mouth. Brushed under the rug history of interventionism. Careful lads, he's got a chip on his shoulder and he's not afraid to tell you about it. Better hope that blue beetle suit comes with earplugs, as it's the only way you're going to shut this guy up. Get some of that Batman tech with noise cancellation built in. And I mean, we've you from reached a point now where the actors are so lazy they won't even be bothered to promote their own movies. They're now praying that fans do it for them. Oh please, will you shill our movie for us because we're too busy standing on a pavement. I mean, James Gunn has fallen off the radar, that's how much he cares about this movie. <laughs> and then the mist of the strikes with bad estimates hasn't put a damper on the cast and crew's spirits. That's because they know they're getting paid either way. They don't care about the outcome. You've not given them any reason to. Tie their wages entirely to the profit of the movie, a lot of actors would be singing a different. June. James Gunn may have pegged Blue Beetle. 
Well, I think that's enough of that article. I should have known better than to go and we got this covered. Blue Beetle vs Batman, the director reveals which superheroes he wants to face. If I wanted to see her with another DC superhero, what would Rudy say to Batman? Probably not a lot, as he would have a broken jaw. Either that or Batman would be pissing himself laughing in a corner, as Rudy doesn't even know what words mean. But in a time where superhero movies have got so formulaic, everyone thinks they already know what the movie will be like before it's even released. Some people have seen the movie in advance, and um, there's one running thread through all of them. It'd love less to those who sacrifice so much to be an invisible force. Cinematic. Latin heroes. As far as I'm aware, that's not actually a word. I also don't know what this invisible army is. I, like, what are we even talking about? I'm not from over there. There's a lot of cultural stuff that I just don't understand. But at the moment, you're describing them similar to the silence in Doctor Who, where the moment you stop looking at them, you just forget they exist and they're slowly taking over the world. An invisible force that powered generations until they could be seen. What is happening? That's not a movie review. <laughs> the work of filmmakers who know and care about Latin America. Perfect celebration of Latino culture. The first one that doesn't mention anything about it and actually talks about the movie, like the suit, the action, and the cast. Didn't last long though, straight back to making Latino's supposed invisibility go into a full-on superpower. What are we talking about? Unabashedly Mexican culture. At least we've narrowed it down to a country, <laughs> rather than pretending that everyone's a monolith who's exactly the same. And to me, it's just all very bizarre, because I don't know why it matters. Oh look, we made it from this geographic region on Earth. So? Why would that make me want to give you money? It's not an advantage. I mean, it's not a positive or a negative, it's just a location that you've shot the movie in. You're supposed to be selling me more, like a story, some kind of emotional meaning. Morals or values that resonate with me and make me want to actually go there so I can experience something or feel something from the people of the story involved. Or even just go and watch a superhero beat crap out of people for two hours. I'd go for that. And instead, we're like, no, no, I mean, he comes from a geographic region. Yes, we all do, mate. So when James Gunn comes out and finally goes, you should get your tickets now, I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to do better than that. When even the actors involved can't be bothered to get off their arse to do a few interviews for the movie, you need to do better than that. So do I think Blue Beetle can bust DC's bad streak at the box office? No. Because everything it values, everything it's put front and centre, is meaningless. Oh wow, it comes from a different country than Hollywood movies are normally made in. Oh look, you've insulted Batman because you're so edgy, and you found it ever so funny that that pissed off the fans, to the point where you considered that to be your job. My work here is done. With all that in mind, I can understand why some people are saying you should delay this movie. I just don't think it'll help. Because I do think it's laughable that the people involved in the movie can't even be bothered to promote their own movie. But from the interviews they've done in the past, it's not as if they helped market it very well anyway. So while I do think it'll be interesting to see whether it comes closer to 12 million or 30 million, I don't think it really matters. Because I don't think you're going to be getting 12 years out of this superhero, and you're definitely never going to be anything like D. DC used Nick Fury. Although maybe you could be the Nick Fury from Secret Invasion, because, you know, because I would be impressed if you could sink to that level of crap. But those are just my thoughts, what are yours? Let me know down in the comments below, like the video if you like the video, subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.